You're listening to the Breakaway Breakdown Podcast, where we bring you interviews with some of the top ropers in the country, news about what's going on in the fastest sport on dirt, training tips for you and your horses, and so much more. I'm your host, Casey Allen. Let's jump in. Hey, everybody. I am so excited to get to wish you all finally happy National Day of the Cowgirl. That's right, today, Thursday, September 15th, 2022, write it down in your history books. We are celebrating the inaugural National Day of the Cowgirl thanks to the folks at Durango Boots. That's right, they got this holiday nationally recognized as a day to celebrate the women who have made the Western industry what it is. We're talking farming, ranching, rodeo, anywhere that you see women being incredible cowgirls, we get to celebrate them today. And I could not be more psyched for this. Now, this comes at an absolutely perfect time because we have partnered at the Breakley Roping Journal with Durango Boots for the entire month of September to bring you Women in Rodeo Month. Now, Women in Rodeo Month is focused on a similar thing as the National Day of the Cowgirl, okay? But we are taking you through stories from World War II to modern day amazing women in team roping, barrel racing, and breakaway roping thanks to our friends at, wait for this, Barrel Racing Magazine, The Team Roping Journal, The Score Podcast, The Money Barrel Podcast, BarrelRacing.com, BreakawayRoping.com, and Roping.com. All of us are working with Durango Boots to just spotlight the incredible women across our industry all month long. Yes, we are talking about the women who have made rodeo what it is today. Now, why am I talking about this? You guys just want to listen to your podcast. Oh, well, I cannot think of a better way to celebrate National Day of the Cowgirl and Women in Rodeo Month by getting to tell you guys that Kelsey Domer is back. That is right, the multiple time WPRA world champion. She can head, she can heel, she can tie down rope, she can breakaway rope. She has been to the national finals of breakaway roping. And wait, she came off of the professional rodeo trail in May because she was pregnant with her daughter, Oakland. So Kelsey Domer started her 2022 season incredible. She won the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo in its first year of having breakaway, shot to the top of the world standings, and then held number two position behind Aaron Johnson going into the summer run. So at the end of August, Kelsey had her daughter Oakland and she watched her name drop down the world standings. She is just outside the top 15 now, but five weeks after having a cesarean section, yes, I said that correctly, five weeks. Okay, you guys, she is back in the roping pen and she has entered up to give a push at the end of the season. So I cannot think of a better way to celebrate the National Day of the Cowgirl and Women in Rodeo Month than by letting you guys get to hear what Kelsey has to say about being a new mom, returning to the roping arena, and battling it out on the bubble position with some of her best friends. This is serious stuff, guys. Now, you will not be hearing this interview from me today. You will be hearing from Chelsea Schaefer, our fearless leader over at the Breakaway Roping Journal, our editor. She's also the editor of the Team Roping Journal, and if you listen to the score, you have heard her lovely voice there. Now, Chelsea is a mom, and let's just say I needed to let the moms take the reins on this one because they have a way better perspective than I could have had on this conversation. So, I'm gonna stop chattering away. We're gonna talk a little bit more about women in rodeo at the end of this episode, and oh, I'm just so excited. Okay, let's jump in. Hello. Good morning, cowgirl. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Are you feeling like a cowgirl again today? Like a real one? I'm getting pretty close. I mean, I'm not sore, so that's nice. <laughs> that is nice. Are your stitches out or were they like self-dissolving ones? Yeah, they were dissolving. But oh. he, he said everything looked good and told me I didn't have any restrictions, so I didn't even have to argue with him. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So how, know, right? what was her birthday? Remind me, when was she born? August 11th, so I'm five weeks out tomorrow. Five weeks out. Most people don't, like, ride even if they don't have a C-section at five weeks. Like, they're barely starting back. 
Right. Yeah. You, I mean, all, all I heard, like, C-section was, like, six to eight weeks. And I know, like, Lindsay Raw, uh, Sumpner, mm-hmm. and I talked to a couple others, like, they didn't even think about it till like, eight weeks. So, I, I mean, didn't even really cross my mind until they bumped me out of the top 15. And then, I mean, I felt uh, great. I mean, to, like, since probably day three after I had her, I've had no pain. Mm-hmm. So I That's felt amazing. really good. So, once, yeah. I was gonna be, I was gonna be bummed for how good I felt. Honestly, yeah. And he told me I was completely crazy, so I'm <laughs> glad that I was on the same page I was. <laughs> when did you start to realize that you were gonna get bumped out of the top fifteen? Did you see that coming a mile away, or did you just kind of look up and be like, "Holy cow!" Uh, not a mile away. I think, like after Cheyenne and Salinas and stuff, I was kind of getting nervous, um, but not. I don't know, not too terribly nervous. And, like, everybody I talked to, they're like, oh, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. And so I was like, okay, you know, I'm just thinking too much into it. But then I knew, like, with San Juan and, um, like, Pendleton and some of those coming up, mainly San Juan, I was really nervous about San Juan. And sure enough, it got, I mean, they bumped me four times Mm -hmm. alone, on, let alone the rest of that week. So I uh, I was kind of, once I remembered, I guess, that they got to go to San Juan this year, that's when I was really getting nervous and it sure enough got me, but I mean, it's awesome though. I'm glad they got to go at 40,000. I mean, there's not, I mean, that's like the only one, right? But only 24 people get to mm-hmm. go in that much. Mm-hmm. So. And I mean, I really, I, as soon as I realized where you were, I was like, man, I remember what we said back in May and you're like, yeah, I don't remember the exact, the exact quote, but like if that, if it, Oh, here, I found it. I just Googled it. <laughs> it said, if 42,000 doesn't make the NFR, that's amazing. And if not, if I'm not in and it takes more than that, that's freaking badass were, was your exact yeah. words. <laughs> yeah. Don't, like, sure. so, A, what is your plan for the next uh, next week and a half? And, B, I guess, how do you feel about the, the that coming true, what we talked about? Um. Like, well, I've entered, let's see, I go to two in Arkansas this weekend. I'm up at Amarillo um, and Omaha, and then I entered Dickinson, North Dakota, because I entered Stephenville and the one in Louisiana, I think it's Spring Hill, Louisiana, Mm -hmm. but um, I got drawn out because I entered for a perfer out, because like Spring Hill, Stephenville, and Omaha all had the same slack. And so I knew it was going to be tricky for everybody to get exactly what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And at this point when I, I mean, I don't feel comfortable just jumping in a plane and, you know, trying to make everything possible since I have Oakland. I, uh, that's just how I entered. Mm So if it was going to let me do it, then sure. If not, I told Ryan that I wasn't going to, you know, put ourselves in a situation where we had to haul butt somewhere, you know, or, just completely drive all night or whatever, you know, Mm -hmm. yeah, we're going to have to go all the way up to Nebraska and in North Dakota, but it's, I've I've done it to where we have plenty of time to do that. So, and that's, you know, those were my choices anyways. So, um, that's the plan right now. Let's get, you know, entered in those rodeos. I literally, I mean, those videos I sent you last night, that was the first time I've roped live since Mm -hmm. May probably. When I talked to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and, so, yeah, how did it feel? How did roping feel? It felt great. I mean, yeah, it felt maybe a little rusty just because I haven't done it. But honestly, like, no balance issues. I wasn't, I mean, like, I wasn't, you know, it didn't hurt me at all. Like, oh, that's, you know, I feel healed up. Like, that, I would, had no worries about that. Because if I had any doubts about that, I wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. But, I mean felt great my horse felt good especially I mean he's been turned out since <laughs> May we've Ryan's you know ponied him some we've been getting him legged up a little bit bit just you know to get him ready anyways but he uh he felt good and ready and so it was nice to get back after it a little bit are you gonna ride little man everywhere at this point yeah yeah I'll just stick with him I mean yeah, I'm sure I could jump on something else at this point, but I don't really want to. I'm just going to stick with what I know and go to go to where I can make it and be okay with that. If if I happen to get in, I get in. If not, 
I give it one last chance. So. <laughs> last I looked, it's Jackie that's 15th. I guess I looked sometime yesterday or the day before. Um, yeah. Any any love lost if you uh, if you go after Jackie at the 15th spot? Yeah, we actually talked about that. We all, we talked mm, week and a half or so ago, and I had told her, I called her and, you know, was like, hey, am I completely crazy for thinking – I can try to do this as long as the doctor doesn't talk me out of it. And she was like, dude, no, like, you know, your body, you know how it's going to feel, you know, if you're confident about it, go for it. And so I've talked to her about it and we kind of joke. She was like, it's going to suck though. If we're the ones battling it out for 15th, I said, yeah, don't let that happen. Get out of my way. Type <laughs> deal. We are laughing at it, you know, like, you know, do good at P up and do good at Pendleton, whatever. And then, uh, she didn't have very good luck, and so actually I talked to her yesterday and told her that I got released and I was going to rope. And I still told her, I was like, man, I still need you to get out of my way. <laughs> we, it, we don't, you know, it just sucks, just back and forth. Of course, yeah. I'm cheering, she's cheering for me. I mean, there's, you know, that's how it's always going to be. But, yeah, I kind of, you know, look when your best friend's 15th and that's what you're gunning for, then, yeah, you've got that feeling in the back of your mind, like, man, this sucks because, I'd rather us both be there, which, you know, that could still happen, but still yeah. that's, that's the spot that I'm going for. Yeah, absolutely. What's Ryan said about all of it? I mean, he's, he's been game for everything. He's, he's like, I got your back, whatever you want to do. I mean, he's just, you know, make sure, make sure you feel good and, and confident about everything. You know, he's ponying my horse. He saddled it every time. He still won't let me saddle my horse, which is <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. No, he's, I mean, he's been awesome. And that's a, he joked yesterday. He's like, so he's like, this means I don't really have to push any more calves, right? Since I have to hold the baby. I said, yeah, pretty much. Looks like you're the filmer now. <laughs> I laughed about that, but no, he's, he's excited to, you know, I mean, I'm not sure. I'm sure he's not excited to drive because <laughs> he's going to be helping drive a lot, but he, uh, he's definitely supportive and he's ready to give it one last shot too yeah what's the baby game plan what are you thinking that's going to be like i don't know i mean it's going to be you know all kinds of new stuff which like yesterday that was the first time brian went um he was team roping and then after they got done team roping i break away so that was our first little family practice Mm -hmm. but um i mean i guess we'll just have to step by step and learn (laughs) as we go but she uh right now she really likes riding in the truck so that's nice (laughs) yeah they fall asleep in the truck that's really nice like i said before we i entered it to try to make it as easy as possible on us that way we weren't just rushing around and you know panicked for getting places on time so hopefully yeah hopefully it it works out good for us and we're not completely stressed out by the time we get somewhere (laughs) when did you quit roping the dummy um did you rope the dummy all summer what what happened as far as that goes not really. I mean, I'd, I'd pick it up and rope it a little bit, but honestly, I just wanted to take a break for a little bit. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, I watched the Cowboy Channel all the time and was keeping up with all my friends and everything like that. But we uh, we actually added on to the back of our house and we'd done some other projects and stuff like that. So I did, you know, we did that. I did a lot of nesting, <laughs> <laughs> went through everything in my house and stuff like that. So I, I mean... I didn't, I kind of just took a break and let roping not be at the top of my priority list for the three months or whatever that I wasn't on a horse. So, yeah, but you- I actually, I don't, did you hear what I had to do for my rodeo count? Huh. So I think it was the weekend before 4th of July. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, I think some to around there. I was with one of my friends came down. And we were out eating and we were talking, she was talking about her circuit count and stuff like that. Um, and we were talking about, you know, how to, what you had to do for the circuit. Like if you lived in your circuit or lived outside of it, it counts mm-hmm. like that, yada, yada, because it's different. <clears throat> and she was like, you don't have a rodeo count, do you? And I was like, no, the breakaway ropers don't have a rodeo count. I said, I don't know if we'll have one, but like right now, you know, we never know what rodeos are going to have it still. Like new rodeos are adding it, whatever. And she was like, no, do you have a minimum count? And I was like, shoot not that I know of like <laughs> you know no big deal and then like I had this bad feeling in my gut I was like okay so I looked you know in the rule book and um under this under the braille race and then yeah they added the breakaway where you had to go to a minimum of 25 rodeos 
So I looked in last year's rule book, and that was not a rule last year. I know for a fact. Um, and so then when it was added this year, I, like, called Jackie and them. I'm like, hey, did you know this? And she was like, no, I had no idea. And so, like, nobody knew, you know. Mm-hmm. I was I was at 17 rodeos, and I was done. I mean, just like I told you mm-hmm. in May, I was done. And so I called the director and talked to people and made sure, like, it was a legit deal for the breakaway rope in. And not just the barrel racing, just because everything has been so different with our rodeos. And they're like, yeah, turns out, you know, it is, that's the deal. So I scored eight calves at <laughs> eight months pregnant to get my rodeo count, just in case I stayed in the top 15. <laughs> so I aired, my first weekend was the weekend of the 4th of July, and I scored six of them at Mesquite, Texas, <laughs> one in Fort Worth, and one in Manhattan, Kansas. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. What horse so that, did did you score on one that needed scoring or I scored him. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't I and that's what we joked about. I was like, man, this would be perfect for, you know, a young horse or whatever, but I mean at that point I was like, No, I'm gonna stick to one that, you know, knows the drill. I know he's not gonna do anything stupid. And I mean, by the time I had to score the eighth one, he knew what was going on and he didn't even bat an eye. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he didn't even the first one, he didn't do anything, but mm-hmm. I uh, took him eight. Well, I guess it was, I got it all done in six weeks because there was a weekend where I got to go, like I got to go to Manhattan and Mesquite in the same weekend. And then the last weekend I got to go to Fort Worth and Mesquite in the same weekend. And I actually, when I scored my last cap on Saturday, and got my rodeo count at Mesquite that next Thursday I had Oakland. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, yeah, that's how it out. How because, did you did you need a step stool? I mean, little man isn't very big, but like okay. No, it was I mean, it was good. I mean, yeah, obviously I didn't want to get on and off forty million times, but thankfully he's not very tall. <laughs> the the hardest part was to put my boots on, like my own boots <laughs> on my feet. That was the hardest part. <laughs> were you up in the slack or were you in perfs and the announcers had to like talk their way around what on earth you just did? Like what? Uh, slack at every one of them, but Manhattan, Kansas, because I didn't have a slack. Oh, good. <laughs> good. So- Only when I went all the way up there was because I knew I could get, if I went to that one, I could get it done by mm-hmm. the first week of August, which thankfully I did, um, which I mean, now, you know, is different. I'm actually going to get to enter but I knew with her being due the 29th of August I wasn't going to be able to you know score after I had her or whatever Mm -hmm. or enter there wasn't going to be enough rodeos to do that (laughs) and I mean I went back and forth I was like I know this is crazy you know but what I mean if I stayed in the top 15 money wise and I didn't have the rodeo count I would have been sick to my stomach you know Mm -hmm. like hey you made the NFR but you can't go because you only went to 17 rodeos (laughs) so dang sure gonna give myself a chance that way yeah it's um i'm excited to see what happens like do you feel like the competitive fire that you felt in other points of your career or are you more passive about it now that you that you know that rodeo isn't your only priority right i mean yeah i mean obviously i feel something because i'm gonna give that you know give myself a chance again and go for it but it is different i've thought of i mean you know yeah if it doesn't work out you know, no big deal. Am I going to be bombed? Of course. I mean, nobody likes losing and, you know, you don't want to be just, just short of the NFR. I mean, I've been there before. Mm -hmm. That's a feeling, but also, I mean, I'm okay with whatever. Like if it's, if I'm going to get this fairy tale ending of, you know, Hey, I was in the top 15 and you bumped me out and I had to score eight of them at eight eight months pregnant. And now I, I get a chance to get back on and make it work. Then awesome i mean i'll have an awesome story to tell oakland when she's old enough to understand but if not then i gave it a shot and we'll get after next year (laughs) and she's been such a good baby up to this point right like not stressful no she's i mean she's been good she uh i mean as as less stressful i guess as you can get on the baby (laughs) yeah i know right (laughs) no it's i mean it's been good she uh she's been pretty easy on us so been at we've been lucky with that yeah that's that is very nice I mean I they always say like there's no such thing as a good baby and you shouldn't even say that but I feel like there maybe there are better moms because there were like friends that had a way better time being a new mom than I did and so it probably wasn't my kids fault it was probably my (laughs) fault that I hated it (laughs) I don't know if you're allowed to say that I was not 
us, you know, like, hey, how's the mom life? I mean, it's awesome. It's not easy, but mm-hmm. it's awesome. You know what I mean? Like, it's hard to, I mean, it's not hard to answer, but it's like, yeah, I mean, she wakes up every two to three hours to eat. So it's not like you just get a full night's rest, but yeah, that's hard. Because that's what somebody asked me the other day. It's like, hey, does she have a bedtime? I'm like, I don't even know. You know, I have no concept of time anymore because right? it doesn't matter. She's too, when she's hungry, she eats. So <laughs> other than that, then she's pretty good. It's not like she screams. Other than that, she's either, you know, awake for a little bit or she's sleeping. So it's part of it. There was another kid at my daughter's preschool that um, her mom was, or not a preschool, her daycare, that her mom was like a child sleep therapist. And my child was like a troll who got up whenever she wanted in the mornings and was ugly and mean and hateful because I had no ability to enforce any sort of bedtime. And the the comparison between the two kids, like her sweet little angel that had adequate sleep and was on this wonderful sleep schedule and mine who, you know, eats Doritos (laughs) in bed and watches YouTube. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm such a bad mom. It, uh, you'll, you'll. You'll learn, or else you'll do way better. You'll learn from our mistakes. We'll see how it goes for you. Sure. <laughs> I know. I remember, like, we learned, and I, you'll learn this. I'm sure you don't even have to learn this because I'm sure you have, like, Jackie and enough friends who rodeoed. But my parents bought a, our daughter a Kindle, um, and I thought that was great. So when we first tried to circuit rodeo and we'd be in and out of the mountains, all through the Mountain State Circuit, and this Kindle that does not have its own Wi-Fi wouldn't work. Then she'd just scream, and it was ugly, and we were all mad. We learned very quick that you had to buy, like, the iPad with the actual service that gets service most places, that you can download all the goods. Like, the, there's no – I mean, this is not um, – this conversation is not sponsored by Apple. However, <laughs> um, <laughs> rodeo moms, like, don't go cheap on your – on your iPads. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. I know that's what I can remember with um, Creed and stuff. You know, I mean, they, he's gone through a couple iPads now, but we, we dang sure made sure it was uh, charged and he had the, you know, because he had one without the service or whatever. So yeah. we made sure the movies were downloaded before so yes. he could watch them when he wanted. <laughs> yeah, you have to do that. You can't, that's, yeah. it's, it's not, we actually, this is terrible. We have two now. So when like one is not charged, the other one is. And we're just yeah. never, which it's not as bad as it was when she was like two and we were rodeoing. Right. But um, anyway, it's such an adventure. <laughs> Funny. Well, Kelsey, I am excited for you. I hope it, Thanks. I hope we are following this story for a while now and get to write all kinds of cool and exciting things in the next two weeks. Yeah, for sure. And for sure it'll it'll be fun to see how it all plays out regardless i'm i'm excited to see i mean yeah there i mean it's not like they didn't have this drama last year but i feel like there's a lot more people in the hunt this year yeah that makes sense maybe i'm completely wrong but i feel like there's a lot more that have a chance yeah i think so too and and i think it's especially and it's it's strangely this way in the team roping too this year in that, like, there are some real veterans on the bubble. Like, with in the yeah. team roping, it's, like, Rogers and, yep. um, you know, Synergy and Billy Jack Sabins and Peyton Bray. Like, there's really great people on the bubble. Um, yep. And same with you and Jackie are not making it fun for anybody else. Um, I would hate to be on the bubble in the breakaway right now with you two. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm excited to see how it all plays out. So. Well, thank Bye. you very much for uh, – yeah taking the mom time for me this morning no problem worked out just right she just ate so now she's napping good (laughs) good hopefully she stays that way for a little bit (laughs) for sure all right thanks kelsey good luck okay bye-bye all right you guys let's get into the nitty-gritty of this world standings race but first i want to thank durango boots for bringing you guys this episode and giving us the chance to talk to kelsey Kelsey does wear Durango boots, which makes this whole thing even sweeter. So if you want to get you a pair, make sure to check out DurangoBoots.com. And also make sure to check out www.NationalDayOfTheCowgirl.com to see all of the giveaways, exclusive opportunities, and content that you guys can check out specifically for National Day of the Cowgirl. 
Now, as far as the world standings go, Kelsey Domer is sitting 19th with $42,192. She's leading Resist All Rookie Leader and BreakawayRoping.com coach Josie Connor, who has 42964 After that, it's Danny Lohman, Tacey Webb, and on that 15th spot, like they talked about in the episode, Jackie Crawford with $44,900. This means that Kelsey Domer is less than $3,000 outside of that number 15 position. But you guys need to make sure you are keeping up with BreakawayRopingJournal.com and all of our social media accounts because going into the last couple weeks of the season, it is getting crazy. The word knife fight doesn't even begin to describe how this is looking, okay? We are not sure who's going to be at the NFBR, and we have been watching this all summer long. So... Make sure you guys get your phones out. Check out nationaldayofthecowgirl.com, durangoboots.com, and of course, breakawayropingjournal.com. And if you guys want to hear from Kelsey and listen to her Q&As, her videos, her dummy roping, her horseback roping lessons, make sure to check out breakawayroping.com for more content from Kelsey. Thank you guys so much for listening today. And again, happy National Day of the Cowgirl. Make sure you're posting on social media with the tags for hashtag women in rodeo month and hashtag national day of the cowgirl and share what makes you cowgirl and what you love about being cowgirl we want to hear from you guys and see it thanks again and we will talk to you guys soon for our next episode next week